And yeah. I remember the first time I met Brandy, she was so insanely nice to me and uplifting. Yeah. I was so sad. I was um I was an extra and it was my first time getting to perform in front of William Regal, uh Dustin Rhodes. No pressure. <laughs> Goldust, yeah. Uh <laughs> Scott Armstrong and a couple of the other agents who were trying to like hide themselves way up in the back and then obviously all the WWE talent that was like up in the back watching like Dolph Ziggler was there the Bella twins and some other people and I got asked to change out of my wrestling gear because they wanted me to be judged on my work ability right. um, and not just my gimmick <laughs> So I'm coming back from changing out of my clothes, uh, out of my, my gear, and I'm in yoga pants and this aerial tank top of this black and white sketched aerial and it's a red tank top and her hair is like swooped like mine is now and stuff. And I pass by Brandy and she goes, she goes basically to the effect, I don't know why you look so sad. You look beautiful and that shirt looks really nice on you. Oh. And I was like, Thank it's you the so little things much. like that yes. that are that you know these people are going out of your way to say something mm -hmm. nice that they're genuinely good people because they don't want to say anything to you. Mm -hmm. She didn't know me from Adam. I was a nobody. I was just an extra yeah. that was going to have like an extra match, which was happening like hours before SmackDown, right? Yeah. And so then I get back into the arena after that interaction, feeling a little better about myself. Like, okay, well now that everybody else is in gear and I don't feel as much like a loser wearing like my wrestling boots with yoga pants. <laughs> <laughs> an aerial tank top like a bloody nerd right yeah <laughs> so now i feel a little bit better about myself instead of like insanely insecure like a little girl in front of women <laughs> Yeah, like, that's how I felt. and uh and then i walk into the scenario where i find out i am not wrestling one match i'm all of a sudden wrestling two matches and the one match oh i did God. have prepared with the person is now first um and i have to stand there quietly after my match is over for all the rest of the matches and then the last the second to last match is me with this girl that's never wrestled before and i never got to talk to her about wrestling and what's funny is on my way out to go change out of my wrestling gear i heard her say something about a sunset flip so that's the only thing I know about this girl, right? And the fact that she had just started training at a hot father wrestling. I would have passed I, out. Yeah, I, would, I was just like, oh, what have I done today? What did I do to deserve <laughs> this? And I found out later on, like everybody else was presented with that opportunity to wrestle that girl and nobody else wanted to because everybody had their pre-planned matches already. Right, they wanted to put right, their right. best foot out there in front of all the agents or whatever. So then yeah. I wasn't there. It was like, and I was <laughs> unanimously elected to do this. Oh, and I, my God. And I nailed it. I w it was so crazy. All my training from OVW prepared me for that moment, and I had no yeah. idea. And the finish of that match, everybody, was a sunset flip. <laughs> oh. And that I was on the terrific. fly. That's all awesome. on the fly. But I don't feel like that experience would have been as amazing and like crazy and humbling and laughable at the same time had it not been for Brandy. Yeah. Like giving me a little pep talk. Like, I don't even know if she knew I needed one, but she just kind of yeah. saw me and said what she said. And I was just like, wow. And then, you know, Cody like really took care of me. And then Bruce Pritchard was absolutely amazing to me. Like he obviously like voted for me on gut check and he was always so supportive of me. He always gave me right. like amazing little tidbits to make myself better, whether it was my entrance, whether it was selling, how to put more oomph into a move, like all of like right. this character development sort of stuff. So like these people are so like, I know I'm like, but I'm so excited that you mentioned that if anybody, you mentioned these individuals. Like, yeah. That just shows you that it doesn't matter who they're interacting with, they're good people, you know? Yeah, it, it, they're such good people. <laughs> and, like, I wish I would have been able to, like, talk to them more about, like, my wrestling. But I wasn't really wrestling yet, you know? I was still picking people up and setting up the ring and, hi, guys, and, you know, Bye. taking tickets and all that kind of stuff. So, um, but, yeah, like, I remember when I picked up Bruce, he was like, I don't know, they sent a pretty girl to come pick me up. And I was like, oh, here we go. This is awesome. <laughs> But it's, it's like the little things that put you in this like this good headspace. Like when I was yeah. an extra, I could not believe going to WWE like how nice people were. And you know, I of, of course I've met some really nasty people in, in this world, but there's so many wonderful people that welcome me with open arms. And you know, I got a chance to have a match on Raw, and like. It was my third singles match ever. Like I was not a wrestler it's yet. Amazing, and and so, you got to do that. That shows something, you know. Like you have was, to understand that. 
It was so cr- I was so nervous, and I remember um, an act of kindness that was crazy. <laughs> I was getting my makeup done, and I was talking. I think I was talking to Chris Atlander because she was at extra extra work too. And I was like, "Oh my god, my stockings have rips in them!" Like I never expected to be on TV. Like I had broken my nose a month before. I had surgery mm-hmm. three weeks before I got there. I was, you know, covering up my stitches and making sure no one could, knew about my nose and freaking out because I hadn't been training. And it was my third match, and I was freaking out. And I was like, now my stockings have rips in it, and I'm going to look like crazy out there. And the makeup artist came back to me later and said, hey, um, somebody has extra pair of stockings. They overheard you talking. Um, you can just come back, like, in a couple minutes. Mm-hmm. And I said, okay. Alexa Bliss gave me her stockings and was like, here, you could keep these. And I was like, seriously? And I still have the stockings because it just, like, meant so much to me. Like, I Aww. wore the crap out of them because it was so nice. Like, she didn't have to do that for me. Like this little girl coming into this, you know, like this world, everyone was so nice. And it was just like, okay, thanks. (laughs) Do you Uh, want them back? She was like, keep them. (laughs) See, that's, that's the little nice things that really, I like, I genuinely feel like little small acts of kindness really do add up to something great, especially because you never really know who somebody is going to turn out being someday. You know what I mean? And you could be a part of that. And that's yeah. why you should always be kind. You know, when presented with a choice, she used to be kind. And that day she was, you know, yeah. and that made the difference. Because, like, if you're honest with yourself, that small act of kindness probably helped boost your performance. I know it boosted mine. It can boost anybody's. You know, if somebody makes you feel like crap, like, that, that's bound to kind of come out a little bit in some aspect of whether it's self-doubt or, 10,000%. you know, or yeah. a delay in the ring that, you know, makes somebody's move not look as great. Like, yeah, yeah it'll come out. But that boost, that, that yeah. boost is something to be said I, for. Yeah, because I've had the complete opposite on shows where people are, <laughs> like, angry at me. And before, literally, it happened to me before I went out on the current one time for a pretty big match when I first started. And they told me, you don't deserve this spot. We're just giving it to you. like you're trash basically and i'm like okay and now you're expecting me to go out into the curtain and and do my best and feel my best self because you know that inner me i'm sensitive so it did get to my head and i was still new in the business and i didn't really understand you know it didn't motivate me it crushed me so you know that had an impact on my performance so it can kind of go both ways and if you think about it that sometimes when people do that that's kind of the effect that that they want you know um it's like people projecting their own insecurities onto you. And then if you allow it in, it does become your your reality, even if it's not true, you know? Right. And, and then they end up winning. It's like drinking poison and expecting somebody else to die. You die a slow, painful death, and the person that you wanted to hurt, you know, keeps going. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and that's kind of like a lot of the experiences that people experience in the pro wrestling industry without actually talking about them. So I'm really glad that you actually had like a really nice positive experience because she didn't have to do that. Yeah. Yeah, they were good ones too. They were like the really thick capizio ones that made my legs Ooh. look really tan. Yeah, yeah. She For anybody that's so listening to this that doesn't know, those are at least twenty dollars a pop. <laughs> and, and they had rips in them when I got out of the ring. <laughs> oh, and those usually last a long time. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> and you know, when you're an extra like that, you want to put your best self out there. And if you don't look good, the person you're wrestling automatically doesn't look as good as they they can be or deserve to be. So it's really a give and take. It's a it's a partnership in the ring, you know. Right. <laughs> So I'm yeah, so glad that God. happened. You know, Me some too. people get a bad rap sometimes from just one action, but that one action alone shows that, you know, Alexa Bliss, like for whether people hate her or love her, there is still goodness in her. And that's something that, you know, there should be more respect for because yeah. when you don't have to do something and you weren't wrestling her. Right. Right. No. So she had no stake in that whatsoever. That was just a good deed. She, she was presented with a choice subconsciously and she chose yeah. to be kind and I was and terrified I that that's of something her. we can all do <laughs> yeah and I, I was I was terrified of her because I remember I had got my first gear made and um oh it looked people, similar to her it was ex- like literally her gear <laughs> and it wasn't what I asked for but it literally was her gear and they make her gear the same people that had made my gear oh they so, should know better oh. I was terrified because I was like, oh my God, she's going to hate me because I'm literally wearing her gear out to the ring without the crisscrosses. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. But And and her approaching me, I was like, oh my God, she's going to tell me I have her gear and I can't wear it. And oh my God, and 
Nope, she just wanted to. I mean, that's a real possibility. That could have happened because, and it's not because of her. Like, that could have been almost anybody, and almost anybody would have been like, yo, you need to go change that. (laughs) Well, they did tell me.